Hello and welcome to Fiki Fireside Chat from Turf 2020. This is when we'll be talking to one of the most interesting people Go in the sports it. ecosystem. Uh, this is a gentleman who in 2008 came back, decided he wanted to do fantasy sport, decided he had no place to play it, and within less than 10 years built something that's a unicorn today. It's one of the most amazing stories in Indian sports, and it's a privilege to have chatting with us today. Harsh Jain, one of the founders of Dream11. Welcome. Lovely to see you here, Harsh. Thanks a lot, Joy. And it's actually thanks to you that I started Dream11 because we're back in the day when I used to play Super Selector, I loved it. And unfortunately, just a great product, wrong time. And uh, that's why in 2008, we got a chance to launch Dream11. But thanks, you're just being modest about it. It was such an amazing idea, such a fantastic story. But tell me a little bit more. I know that you know people ask you a lot of questions about this, but not enough people know about the early years of that journey. So you come back in 2008, you want to play a fantasy sport. What happens next? So yes, yeah, so I, was, I was in the US uh, for studies, 2000, well, in the UK, then US from 2001 to 2007. And I was a, and I still am a die-hard fantasy football fan for EPL. And um, when I came back, IPL was just starting out. So it was the first time cricket was getting organized outside the ICC FTP. And league sports were starting, right? League cricket. And um, I was like, okay, this is interesting. Let's play fantasy cricket. And I went looking for Super Selector. True story, right? And it, it had shut down. And I was like, how can this shut down, right? Fantasy sports is the driving force of like my football addiction. Right? I'm like, I watch so many more matches and fantasy. I watch so much more football because I want to know how so many different players are playing in fantasy football. And so then there was just a large consumer problem, which was a personal problem, which we said, okay, if we, if we get this right, let's hope 100 million Indians will actually want to try this out and play it. And we didn't do any fancy market study or anything like that. We just went to solve a problem, right? And so we launched, but we copied the West and we copied the free-to-play ad-driven business model. And very, um, you know, unfortunately, we were dealt with a very hard reality that our vision wasn't, uh, you know, there's this uh, famous saying, I think, by uh, Steve Blank that no business plan survives contact with the customer, right? And so that contact was very hard contact for us. And we completely failed 2008, 9, 10, 11. And then 2012, we launched what you see today. We pivoted to, to a freemium fantasy sports model. Fabulous, fabulous story. And, you know, that's exactly, for all of you listening out there, it takes four years of persisting through failure also to get sometimes where you do. And it's a billion dollar company today. But one more thing, I mean, one of the two, the two great breakthroughs you did, one was to turn around and say, let me play on individual games. Let me not stretch this game. Not Let me not have people think about it too much. That, where did that come from? And, you know, when did that thought strike you? So it's, it's you know, most of these thoughts are not brilliant thoughts or some amazing Eureka moment ideas, they're actually experiments. And you just as a, you know, if you run a good product company, you just have to experiment every day with everything. And um, a thousand experiments will fail and only 10 will succeed, right? And then later on, people can tell you how brilliant those 10 are. But you have to fail a thousand times all the time and be comfortable with that. So we tried season long. We tried uh, tour long. We tried one day where there were multiple matches in one day. We tried breaking a day into like two, three matches. And then finally we went to one match. And so, you know, just on the format, we've tried like seven, eight different, um, you know, bunching together of sports, of matches, of things like that. and. Finally, we saw that the sachet model, right? Essentially, India is a sachet economy, right? We don't like to buy whole shampoo bottle. The entire shampoo industry got changed when they got a sachet. We like instant gratification. 
we don't have the attention span to commit to an entire season long and so we like the fact that as a as a country as a as a people we like to go watch a match play for that match um make a partic- fantasy team participate for that match and then be done with it so then if i don't want to make a team for the third india australia t20 and just the first one or the second one i can do that if i'm busy for one of the matches i won't lose out by not making my fantasy team and i think that's how the entire gen z is evolving right there also the the other interesting thing about it is one about the think about it sanchez is the, the amount okay that you give it okay somebody plays just this much you the second is the money i mean literally what's the lowest figure in your dream 11 game what's the lowest money with which somebody can play oh we have even like 1 rupee the idea has never been about the money right like on fantasy sports in dream 11 the average ticket size is 35 rupees it's cheaper than you know buying a packet of crisps and a drink for a game right it's it's pure entertainment value the money is there just as like hey i'm putting my money where my mouth is kind of fun part right it's entertainment disposable income in fact we did a we did a study of our data 99 point some one two percent people have never in their lifetime won or lost less more than 10000 rupees in their lifetime of playing on dream level so over many many years then net aggregate winnings or losses is less than 10000 rupees so it just shows it's purely entertainment and engagement the money is only there as a fun factor and it adds that extra adrenaline in fact our contests are also created in such a way that at least 50% or more people will win at least their money back every time so no. yeah the money is money is just a fun factor No, no, but they are absolute. Then what you did was allow that money to also be an affordable factor in the sense that yeah, it just exactly. is at a level. Is it a level of engagement? So it's adding, as they say, a little bit of spice to the game, but it's yes. not really hurting your wallet. It's, it's the masala. You're right. It's a, it's the so, masala. Hey man, like eighty percent of users have never played for money ever. Uh, that, uh, that's a that's a really sobering and interesting stat which a lot of people will not know about this yeah. behemoth that's Dream Eleven. So coming continuing on this, you know the other thing was that what you said that one of the most important things about a uh, fantasy sport is it just increases the depth of your involvement in the sport. Yeah. So if I'm say playing fantasy Premier League football, I can't just afford to see Chelsea, which is my club, or Manchester United. I have to watch other clubs to pick up the players. Number two. I have to actually pick up the smaller buys because I can't afford to buy only superstar players. No, yeah. no system will allow you to buy. So tell me something. Do you actually? Can you actually go to a broadcast and say that this is actually helping you? Because in a way, Super Selector was started for broadcaster for ESPN. That's what we are saying. It's increasing <laughs> engagement in non-India cricket. Yeah, and in fact, there any study on that? There was a KPMG report, I think. I believe KPMG. I think KPMG only. But the report said that uh, fantasy sports. They did a massive survey, and they said that fantasy sports increases sports consumption by sixty percent. So, which is which is like a mind-boggling number, right? If our if our sports population all of it starts playing fantasy sports, imagine the broadcasters uh, will be pretty happy, right? With the leagues, the teams, the players, the broadcasters, because like you're saying right now i have cresswell in my fantasy football team i wouldn't normally follow aaron cresswell and see that okay he's a good attacking defender and that's why i've taken him right now i'm looking for a, a a good value budget defender so i know that okay i'm a manchester united die hard fan but i'm still looking for a liverpool defender because you know uh, trent was out for a bit of time now he's back fabinho's playing in the back but most likely Phillips or someone will fill in in the back, right? And he's really cheap, so it's a good good opportunity to get a great ROI on him. So it changes the way you consume the game. You don't just follow the top teams or the team that you like. You follow everyone to see value picks, research, knowledge, chemistry, uh, form of every player. So yeah, of course, sports consumption goes through the roof. And so, for example, you know when. Um, 
let's say india australia playing and india scores like 200 and australia is 50 for 8 the whole world has switched off the tv no one's watching the match anymore the fantasy sports fan is watching till the last ball because every ball will make a difference to that person's leaderboard yeah absolutely, absolutely. i think that's such an important part of it is not because the depth of engagement with sport changes with fantasy sport absolutely. and that's a very fundamental thing so you know you've done such a successful and amazing job with cricket i mean cricket is obviously still your biggest thing but what you've done also is very early branch off into other sports and yeah. fantasy for you know not just with indian ambitions with the global ambitions say the story with the nba you've got together not only do you do that I think the fantasy game on the NBA site is a Dream 11 game today, right? That's, that's so tell us a little bit more about that and why, look, NBA is still not numbers-wise a huge sport in India. So obviously there are global ambitions that play out here. What was the thought process and how was the process? Actually, um, we, we're not looking at global ambitions. We are strongly focused as an Indian company to just solve for India. And this is something we decided very early that India is a pretty big market, right? <laughs> I mean, we have a billion sports fans here. If we solve for that, we'll be able to do anything else we want. But if we don't win in India, none of our global markets will matter. So we said, let's just solve for India, right? And I mean, we're still at like 100 million users today. And there are billion sports fans. So there's a large amount of growth left for us. But I would say that... Um, we also said that India, in its size of a billion sports fans, cannot be a one-sport nation, right? The problem is that sports, um, as an industry, is built kind of top-down, in the sense that it's all about mass and scale. We want to build it bottoms up. So we want to say, okay, if 50,000 people are even watching a Ranji match, that's okay. Or if 50,000 people are watching a, um, you know, one like hockey match that's okay because there are 50,000 like hardcore fans so that's why we want to focus on basketball hockey football bas um, um, volleyball we've we've done all kinds of sports because we now have nine sports because there are pockets of users and in india pockets can also be lakhs of people right it's just that the advertising model doesn't work for that but we don't do ads so as a freemium model, you can actually get value. You can drive value to those sports fans. And you know what? Those sports fans actually get much more value than a cricket fan getting something with fantasy cricket. Because for them, they are so die hard about that sport that they will sit up like, I'll watch a Manchester United match at 145 for the Champions League, right? And like, if I can get more value for that match, I will value that so much more. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, the long, uh, a long while back, they talked about what, you know, the long tail of, you know, retailing, but Amazon basically does a long tail. So yeah. what effectively you are doing is you're attacking not just the mass, but the long tail of Indian sport. The smaller That's games that are actually giving value pockets, but as you said, a pocket in India, I mean, look, South Bombay is about the size of New Zealand, Bombay is the size of Australia in terms of population terms. So. It's a completely understandable model about what you're trying to do with it. There's one more very interesting thing. So when you chose these sports that you've gone after, right, it's to start with, what were you looking for? What was uh, going through your head saying, okay, these sports, it has to be a team sport, or what are the various factors that you're looking at to choose the sports you're going after? So I think the main focus has been for fantasy sports. There's team sports, right? Uh, fantasy sports doesn't work for like a one-on-one -on -one match like tennis or table tennis or golf, right? It mainly works in team sports. And so that's why we've not done like F1, golf, tennis, table tennis is because for fantasy sports, you actually need two teams where you select players from and everyone has enough combinations and permutations to select a team and millions of people have a million plus combinations of teams. So we focus on all team sports. And any kind of team sports, which also had a lot of um, statistics around it. So fantasy sports requires a lot of stats. And that's one of the, actually, the drawbacks of fantasy football. Football is mainly driven by goals and clean sheets and assists. 
and so now we've started adding points for passes pass completion tackles but even then there's nothing like like basketball and cricket sports like that have the scoreboard ticking every 30 seconds and so those are much more fantasy friendly if you may and absolutely i mean because and baseball cricket basketball these are built for fantasy literally in the amount of also the amount of stats they generate and the amount That's of things that you exactly. can do with those stats so one more thing i want to come to so one of the great things that has happened is that while the growth has been so sharp in the last 2 3 years what's been also really encouraging is the fact that you've actually decided to come together and self regulate as an industry okay the federation of indian fantasy sports and i know that you had a large part to play in it but there've been others as well and instead of you know before anyone else comes in decides what the rules are you guys have come together so how did that start what was the thought process behind all of you meeting and yeah. how did you go about it so we said look if this industry has to grow in a space which is not yet regulated by the government there has to be a body which kind of sets the rules so that we protect consumers you know 5 7 years ago there were a lot of fly by night operators doing kind of mal practices and there will always be in every industry these small operators <clears throat> which create a they are black sheep for the whole industry and sometimes the government is forced to take a knee jerk reaction because of these black sheep and you know affect the players who actually do a good job so we said before that happens let's get together let's form a neutral unbiased body which will regulate the industry which will have eminent personality so we got you know amrit mathur we got professor shetty we got uh, justice sikri now we got an roy uh, now we have um, mr julka who is the ex cic of india right so these are very eminent personalities who will make sure it's governed in a very strong and strict way to protect consumers most of all create a level playing field for everyone create standardized best practices because the government has so much to do right and it cannot go and start regulating every small industry now once we become much much larger as an industry i'm sure the government would also want to come in and look and make sure it's being regulated the right way and that's why now that we reached a certain scale fifs has been set up in the right way and we are so fortunate to have niti ayog and amitabh kant uh, you know uh, shri amitabh kant has done a fantastic job of just uh, giving out the draft regulations which say that the self regulatory model is the right way forward for fantasy sports and they have decided a set of guidelines that can help the industry bifurcate itself from gaming you know the problem is a lot of people think of fantasy sports as gaming it's not because gaming is based on simulation right gaming is all about simulation fantasy sports is sports engagement it's based on the actual sports match it's based on a real life event it's not available 24/7 and so niti aayog has completely bifurcated fantasy sports from gaming and it said this is a great sports engagement tool that is very critical to sports development in the country and helping the economy and so i think it's a fantastic move to help self regulate this industry and grow it even further Oh, absolutely in fact i was privileged enough to get a copy of the report and i think uh, for all of you out there that report is out there in the public domain they are looking for people to give suggestions on it till the 19th of december so guys go out there and do that because it's really important that before you know and as they said the first thing about this is keeping the consumer protected because the consumer is at the core of the engagement the consumer is not protected no industry can survive if the consumer or the a user is not protected there so great work there and i think that's moving in the right direction because i said it's smart to be able to turn around and regulate yourself at this time when before anyone else asks is this industry regulated or not it's important to go there and at least put down basic frameworks and get people who are respected enough you know so that they have an understanding of what is there and what we call constitutional proprietary is maintained so that's one part of it which is the fantasy sports industry but i think what one of the thing you've done very well harsh is you've opened up the plethora of what is the other parts of sport so you know when we talked about sport we only had the sport by itself now you have something like fantasy sport the other really nice interesting part of it where you know there's something there 
is fan code, which is you know something that's building along with it. Tell us a little bit about it because there are a lot of people interested in knowing how content is also you can actually supply the long tail for content as well as big as well as the big matches. Yeah, so I think um, to your point, you know, sports has always done really well as long as it was tier one cricket. Tier one cricket, the rights for tier one cricket, the entire business and economy of tier one cricket is at par with the top sports and leagues on the planet, right? Our problem has always been the tier three, four, five, and that's where we saw a huge opportunity. So we said, look, someone like Star Sports, for example, Disney now does a phenomenal job with tier one sports and tier one cricket and all of that, but someone needs to serve that tier three, four, five audience. So fan code was something that we incepted out, you know, incubated from Dream Sports, which is now a parent entity, to help solve that problem and to basically personalize content for consumers across sports. So on fan code now, you know, most of the apps if you use are actually cricket scoring and cricket news. But that's our entire push. Our push is that listen, there's more to sports than cricket. Cricket is amazing. But we want consumers to be able to watch or follow or consume content for cricket, football, basketball, kabaddi, hockey, baseball, every, everything, right? In one app. And that's what Fancode does. It allows you to follow scores across sports, personalizes the content for you based on which sports you follow, which teams you follow, and it allows you to have commerce. So there's also like an FC shop, which allows you to buy jerseys, caps, memorabilia, you know, like basically sports com commerce. And so the idea for fan code was about serving that sports fans to the next level when they're not only engaged in playing fantasy sports with Dream 11, but we're serving them on sports content and sports commerce in a personalized way on fan code. And the best part is that it's free and it's, uh, you know, one of the fastest live scoring platforms in the country now. And there's no ads because we want to, we don't want this whole like ad model, right? Where you open the app and like ads come on your face, ads come on top, bottom, right, left. And there's some content in the middle somewhere. So yeah, very interesting because I was, you know, watching, I was trying to watch the Bengal cricket, uh, which was happening, the T20 channel, which is one of the products which is on fan code. And very interestingly, there was a model allowed me to buy a match a day, literally buy a match at yeah. a price where you could do it. So what you've done instead of saying that, okay, 199 per month or 699 a month or whatever, you're saying for 11 rupees, 20 rupees, buy a match, watch it today. We don't want a match to watch it tomorrow. It's yeah. no skin of your nose. So you've basically reduced the consumption size of the uh, you know, ability of this guy to put it out from his pocket. Yeah, we'll get to like, you know, five rupees. You want to you wanna just watch the match today, pay five rupees. You don't need to buy for the whole season. You don't need to commit for the year, right? Where it's like a pay-as-you-go model, right? It's the prepaid versus postpaid model of India, right? Postpaid consumers are very, very few in India and telecom, but they account for a very large revenue base. Yeah, their ARPU is big, yeah. But the masses in India are prepaid, right? They, they like the pay-as-you-go model. No, absolutely. The other thing I want to ask you is that, you know, really, and I've been a part of uh, KKR and seen a lot of it, you know, even with Shah Rukh Khan with everything, the merchandise model in India is, has been like a Shangri-La. Everyone knows it's up there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody has any idea so far about how to get there because, you know, there are some basic issues. One is piracy, of course, which is a big issue. The second is our jerseys till the last moment, they're trying to sell it to some sponsor. Some one sponsor is changing everything. Yeah, yeah. If you remember the Deccan charges in year one, they used to have guys, you know, pin it up with scotch tape, they'd put on the new sponsor on top of it in year one. But that's exactly what happens. How, how are you planning to solve that? Because merchants, if you solve that, that is a problem that a hundred minds of Reebok, Nike, all these guys have hit their heads against it and they've just got nowhere. I think the, the leagues are also maturing at a fast pace. They themselves are setting conditions. They themselves are getting good. You know, that was very early years of IPL as well. Now I think there's a significant demand supply improvement in terms of spots on the jersey. And all the teams are putting deadlines, right? Let's say January. 
Okay, whoever's come on us on what till January, you'll get printed on our jerseys that we're selling. Otherwise, at least the ones that we're selling will not have you on it, right? And then you have to make peace with it. That's part of the contract, right? So everyone sees value in it, and the ecosystem will find a way. The important part is also to bring the price point down. And if your if your jerseys are selling at a thousand rupees, the replica base model cannot be selling at a thousand rupees. If you're selling at a thousand, then there's going to be a fifty, hundred rupee pirated version. But if you're selling at three hundred, four hundred, five hundred rupees, then the probability of buying a hundred rupee fake goes down, right? But I think most importantly, you have to uh, target the consumers the right way. And we're hoping that with a hundred million users on Dream Eleven, we know which users are creating a team for which spot, which match. And so we can say, hey, I know, Joy, I know. Without you telling me, you're a big KKR fan. You follow cricket. You also follow football. You follow kabaddi, but maybe you don't follow basketball, right? And I know which teams you follow because those are the teams you're engaged for. Those are the matches you're engaged. And selling you a KKR jersey versus an MI jersey without asking you is, you know, you have to. Personalize the sports experience. Sports is as personal as you can get, right? Even as a Manu fan for the last five, seven years, I've been dying, but I will never stop being a Manu fan, right? Oh, so, absolutely. In fact, that's one of the things that I go and you know I teach a class at Mike and I am Cal, and that's the one thing I go. I go and tell them that you know what you talk about sport, how it's different from other pieces of marketing, and I say here the new offer, and I ask which of you is in support the Premier League club, and the hands go up and ask the Manu. So I catch one of these guys, all girls, and a lot of them are girls as well. I say, okay, there's a new offer. Uh, you're a Manchester United fan. City has come up with an offer, ten thousand rupees to convert for your support. And they think about it and say no. And then I just keep pushing the figure, and they look at it in their mind. And they come to five lakhs, and they say no. And I said, here's a club that probably doesn't know you exist, and you that kind of money you're walking away from because you cannot bring yourself to support another club. So absolutely, I completely concur with you. They cannot be a more personal experience than sport. And in fact, just because you brought up that point about women, uh, in fact, women's cricket and women's, you know, the women's sports have also seen a dramatic growth because of fantasy. So we've seen that because we've allowed created fantasy sports for women sports, right? Women matches. Um, the viewership of those women's matches went through the roof. and so it's it's amazing to see how if you create the right hook and engagement and create a way for consumers to um engage with the sports they love you can actually drive viewership fantasy can drive viewership rather than viewership driving fantasy no no absolutely i completely concur in that question do you have any initial data on say merchandise sales how is it going what's the outlook and what are the indications is it low value items what seems to work when do they seem to work is there anything there any point is there we're literally 3 months old into uh, commerce and merchandising we started with this ipl we had five teams uh, five or six teams selling all the merchandising on fan code but to us it seems like um, the the fashion is a very important aspect it can't just be like a plain like you know uh mumbai indians or kkr it people like like trendy cool designs around the teams they support or then they like to buy the replica of the jersey right but they want to buy usually just plain ones and they'll obviously the price point is coming closer to that 500 rupees is that where we see like people are happier more comfortable buying it the minute you start going to that 1000 rupees you see a large drop off So basically, you're saying that replicas work, which is true everywhere in the world, which is the absolute replica jersey, yeah, yeah. and that's the standard model. But that's a pricey model. Yeah. But otherwise, they are looking for something that they can be proud to wear of even outside. They need a little bit of style, so they they're a yeah. sort of slightly evolved consumer. That's right. It's like a cool T-shirt in general, okay. with my team's logo on it, right? So it's it's a two-in-one kind of thing. Okay. uh we were on the other thing uh you know uh this year the bcc obviously a sponsor stepped out now you guys stepped in and i mean you did an amazing job where you stepped in b is that i just have to tell you that i thought your advertising was absolutely super spot on 
I mean, mm-hmm. one addressing the whole thought that the consumer is king. So, you know, when yeah. when it's fantasy, Bumrah is not as important as that lady out there. He has mm-hmm. to bowl a mini over, and that's <laughs> great advertising. The second was, you know, emphasizing on the amount of time you need to spend on it, which was saying that okay, just five minutes is what required. So the two real areas that you hit were very strong. <laughs> what made you though? I mean, you could have done those even being just a, you know, just a fantasy partner. What made you also get onto the shirts? I mean, get onto the logo. I mean, yeah. So look, we thought it was a great opportunity. I think entrepreneurship is all about calculated risks, right? And um, it was very risky for us because a we were coming on as a sponsor when there's an IPL and there have been many sports tournaments that have started that have had COVID issues, had to pause or shut down, and so. we were praying that the whole ipl will go and you know we are lucky that csk had some covid issues but like a couple of weeks before the ipl right but during the ipl there were no covid issues so that was a big risk for us um secondly we thought that hey this is a great look everything we do is experimentation when else in our life are we going to be able to get ipl sponsorship for one year and see how it goes right and so you know it's always five years no Then you can. I mean, so this is a great experimentation framework for us, and it allows us to actually measure the data in a much better way. And finally, we said that look, at this time when IPL has lost its sponsor because of the India-China issues, right, or whatever other issues there were, um, sports companies in India need to step up. And why should we have? Why should we not have an Indian sports company? being the title sponsor of india's greatest sports property right and why should we not have the title sponsor of the sports property selling sports itself so i think this is the first time that the title sponsor of a sports property is selling point was to watch more sports right and so that symbiotic relationship was you know the opportunity was fantastic we grabbed it i think the BCCI and the IPL and Star Sports, everyone, they've done a phenomenal job. This IPL was amazing, and it had something like five, six super overs. I lost count. It had a super super over also, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, I think it was just what India needed to help us a little snap out of the COVID blues as well, right? Sitting at home, getting live entertainment every day, guaranteed entertainment for four hours, family. entertainment was amazing no no absolutely and it's just so interesting that now when we look at it we just see about what's happening with uh, south africa the south africa england series and you realize how close the shave it was i mean how difficult it would have been during that ipl the fact that it went off completely safely now when you're seeing a south african series being cancelled you realize What a phenomenal effort these guys did to keep it going! Unbelievable! What I, you know, even the decisions to not allow not allow spectators in the stadiums. There were a lot of people who were saying that, oh, you know, we are starting games with a few spectators. A lot of other sports doing it, and it's a difficult one to stand and say, you know, we are going to keep player safety first, tournament safety. Tournament should happen the right way, and it was one thousand percent the absolutely the right decision. and the ipl went off without a glitch and it, it the the logistics you know handling the tournament in that way was just impossible task which was you know we don't think about it on daily basis we just enjoy the matches but the logistics behind having different teams in different hotels having that bubble having three stadiums traveling every day hats off to all of them No, oh, absolutely. I, I've 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 seen it done. I was a part of it when we didn't have the bubble, and I knew how difficult it was. It is, it is unimaginable the quality of the job that they pulled off in the IPL. It's something that's worth seeing. So you know, this is where it is now. Where do you see now? We've come to here. You're a unicorn. You're the largest player. There is now a federation. The government has got behind that set some really interesting guidelines and some very revolutionary guidelines. that niti yo yo statement has some revolutionary guidelines as to how the sport can go ahead what's the journey now where do you see indian fantasy sport going um thanks thanks to progressive thinking of like niti ayog and shri amitabh kant and many others in the system like this to 
help ensure fantasy sports is carved out from gaming which is a you know wrong misconception i think now fantasy sports is been embraced as part of sports as part of sports engagement and that will really help take this to the next level to help really integrate sports and fantasy sports in a much larger way we need to have more matches where users can actually see you know fantasy sports allows users to participate in the sports match so we need more broadcast to integrate with fantasy sports and personalize the sports viewing experience to users so every ball they should not just be seeing the sports score but they should be seeing their fantasy sports score and how their leaderboard is changing and that keeps them glued on for the whole sports match in a way that makes it so fun and exciting and social right it's always against like 70% of our users play only with their friends and family like colleagues friends families and that's the beauty of sports right it's not about sitting in a corner and playing some game alone it's it's really about the social experience it's about play you know participating with your friends and family and colleagues and having that like banter and like saying that oh i told you today this player is going to do really well and this player is not going to do well because of this thing right and so i think it it, it has a bright future and we would hope that we can take this user base of dream 11 from 100 million to maybe 250 million in the next 3 years <laughs> just like you not to set yourself any easy targets out there okay one more last thing before you go i mean you've done it all in these last 10 12 years have been an amazing journey and i know there are thousand other entrepreneurs out there sports entrepreneurs as well watching this today if there's one piece of advice to give them what would you tell them um solve a problem right solve a problem that you are super passionate about don't go chasing some new fad or something cool and exciting solve a problem if you, even if you want to do it in sports right there's sports analytics there's uh, sports wearables there's um, sports like astroturf and turf bookings and there's there's fitness there's health there's so many things to do in sports right if you want to work in sports or any other field you need to do something that you will go to sleep thinking about you will wake up thinking about and you're not at peace until that problem is solved for you personally right and just focus on that because the easiest thing is to do is to say yes to doing everything ha ye bhi kar leta hu ye bhi kar leta hu right and so the idea is to focus on one large problem and just don't rush till you solve that perfect that's a wonderful wonderful way to end this harsh thank you so much for your time that was you, personally a really enjoyable and i wish you all the best thank you so much for giving us the time thank thanks you. so much joy thanks for taking the time